What is going on guys, Kills 115 here. Welcome to my Extreme Rules prediction video. This is going to be the predictions for the 2016 Extreme Rules pay-per-view live tomorrow night on the WWE Network. Or if you're watching this on Sunday, tonight. But this is another one of personally my favourite uh, WWE pay-per-view simply because it's the only time really kind of where every match is you know some type of stipulation around it maybe a steel cage hell in a cell stream rules match false count anywhere anything like that it is that type of pay-per-view it is so fun to watch every single year i really not i haven't disliked an extreme rules yet but maybe this year might be different maybe i'll dislike it because the last pay-per-view was pretty bad but we'll see how this one goes. So anyways, let's stop rambling and get on with the predictions. So as normal, we're going to kick things off with the pre-show. This year's pre-show will have, once again, Corbin versus Ziggler. You swear they don't have anyone else for freaking Baron Corbin. Like, honestly, can you not put him against anyone else? Are you protecting him that bad? Which superstar can we put in... That doesn't cause injuries to superstars as much. Ziggler, yeah, you back, yeah, back there, yeah, 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 yeah. You're going against Corbin for the next few months, okay? We're going to end this rivalry around WrestleMania 33 time, right? Yeah, good, right, so. It's stupid. We've seen these guys fighting ever since Corbin came up to the main roster. First night after WrestleMania, Ziggler versus Corbin. Second week, I'm pretty sure it was there sometime, or maybe Ziggler attacked him or something like that. But the last pay per view, it was Ziggler versus Corbin. And I believe Ziggler got the win. This time, Corbin's getting the win. He needs it. Ziggler doesn't need this at all. I mean, it is just stupid the fact that they're even putting Ziggler over Corbin. Corbin needs to win. Corbin deserves a win. He will win. Put your money on it. Next, we have the. First ever Ambrose Asylum match. It is going to be Dean Ambrose versus Chris Jericho. This match should be amazing. I actually have high hopes for this match. Simply because it's something new to me. Even though we've already seen this type of match in TNA. Lockdown. If you don't know what it is, look it up. All the old ones. Pretty, pretty decent matches. So, I think... Dean Ambrose should come out on top of this one. Why? Because Ambrose, it's his match. I'm pretty sure, I honestly, my brain from, sorry about that, I'm trying to hold the phone my other hand. I cannot remember Payback. I don't know why it's just not coming to my head. I, I'm pretty sure Chris Jericho went over. I think. Did Jericho go over? I can't even remember the match. I honestly cannot remember the match. I'm pretty sure Chris Jericho went over that night. So, but either way, even if he didn't, I think Dean Ambrose is going to go over. Why? Because, again, Ambrose needs the push. If he, they want to make Ambrose a main event star, he has to keep rising above all these former champions like Chris Jericho, first ever undisputed champion holding the WWE and World Heavyweight title at the same time by beating Austin and Rock. I'm pretty sure it was Austin and Rock. Austin, he did beat for his last one. But Dean Ambrose needs to win. Chris Jericho is going to be retiring very, very soon. So he doesn't even need this win. So I think Dean Ambrose should win the Ambrose Asylum. I have high hopes Dean Ambrose wins. The match is good. And that we have one hell of a showdown. And please, WWE... Don't turn this into the Brock Lesnar Dean Ambrose match that we were all hoping was going to be amazing. Because it was just shit. Give them more time. Give them more extreme moments. And actually do something with this match. Please. Next we have the Women's Championship match. This is going to be a rematch from Payback. Now this match I remember simply because it was just so, so retarded. It basically did just another friggin' Boston screw job. Like, ugh. it was such a good match. If you go back to Payback, it was such a good match. I was actually enjoying it. And then they just had, oh, Charlotte, Charlotte's got her. And I think it was just like the, the figure four or whatever, the sharp shit or whatever it was. And then referee Charles Robinson, ring the bell, ring the bell. And 
it was just stupid. But this time we have Charlotte versus Natalia with a twist. There will be no Ric Flair. If Ric Flair gets involved, Charlotte will lose the title. There's not much of an extreme plot to it, but they don't really do extreme matches with Divas anyways. I think they should, like especially for this pay-per-view, but they don't really do that anyways. So, if Ric Flair gets, comes, even shows up at the friggin' match, Charlotte will lose the title of the title goes to Natalia. Who am I putting money on? Charlotte. Why? I don't think she's going to lose the title. I think she'll lose the title at SummerSlam to Sasha Banks. It's going to happen. It's got to happen. I, I do think Natalia, no matter what, she deserves to be the woman's champion. She deserved to be Divas champion for a long time, but WWE just didn't give it to her. So now I think that I, I just don't see I don't see her actually winning the title, even though it's come up. But I think this will be the moment where Charlotte finally, you know, pushes Flair away, goes off on her own, turns on her dad, and then goes on to SummerSlam to face Sasha Banks. My win is Charlotte to win this one. Up next is the Fatal Four Way match for the Intercontinental title. This one was a bit of a weird one because the way they booked it, like the way they started it off. So at Payback we had Owens versus Zayn. Owens came over but not the way I thought he would. I thought both of them would get counted out and at this pay-per-view we would have Last Man Standing. That didn't happen. No, Owens came over clean. You know, did a little promo afterwards saying, you know, everything with Zayn is done. He's done. Doesn't want Sami Zayn again. Sat down, he said, I'm going back to the Intercontinental title, I'm focusing on that. Then we had the Intercontinental title match, Cesaro was doing amazing, about to win. Sami Zayn comes out, attacks Kevin Owens, who's sitting at ringside, and then all hell breaks loose, Cesaro's about to win, referee's distracted, Miz wins, we get a fatal four-way match. Who's going to win this one? I want either Cesaro or Sami Zayn. Because they're the only two I think really need it at this moment. I have a feeling they might give it to Kevin Owens for the Sami Zayn Kevin Owens storyline. But I really think Cesaro deserves it. I, I, I more want Cesaro to win. So we're going to go with Cesaro. I want Cesaro to win simply because he deserves it. He needs it for that big push again that he lost when he basically got injured. Because he was in a huge, huge storyline with Kevin Owens. Got injured. And... Well, I don't think at the, at the time he was in the story with Kevin Owens actually won with Stardust. But the Kevin Owens story was just so good. It was going so well. And it was obviously one of their most, like, their, their best times basically. And I think Cesaro deserves the title of him because he hasn't won a you know, solo title since his United States title run back in 2010. I'm pretty sure it was, no, it wasn't 2010. He hadn't come in yet. It's like 2012, it's early, late 2012, early 2013. I'm going to go with one of those. I can't remember. But either way, the United States title was his last solo title win. He didn't get the world title. He didn't get the WWE world title. He needs the Intercontinental title. And he needs to win it tomorrow night. Next is the United States Championship match. And finally, it's a US title match that doesn't involve Ryback. For certain reasons. So, basically, we got Rusev. This one I'm actually excited for. Why? I think WWE are finally going to give Rusev back his push. The push he had as US Champion, he needs that back. League of Nations did nothing for him. Uh, you know, the whole storyline with Ziggler did nothing for him, but just made him look like an even bigger jobber. He needs this US title just to get back his, you know unstoppable reign so I'm gonna pick Rusev to win this one simply because I want him to win I want Ruru to win this match take the US title maybe go back into a storyline with John Cena John Cena is returning May 30th so that's like I'm pretty sure that's two weeks Mo Monday week John Cena returns and Seth Rollins is set to return all that he just you know all the guys that are pretty much injured are set to return Excluding Tyson Cade and all the guys that recently got injured. But they're all set to return. Orton, Cena, Seth, and... There's another one. Orton, Cena, Seth. No, Cesaro returns. Never mind. So, 
they're all set to return. John Cena and Rusev will be another amazing storyline. And hopefully this time doesn't bury him. But Rusev to win. Sorry for that rant. Rusev to win. Up next is the Extreme Rules Tag Team Total Tornado Tag Team Match. I'm pretty sure it's Extreme Rules. It should be. Because so far, none of these matches have Extreme Predictions. They have no Extreme, uh, you know, match types yet. So, ugh. but this match is going to be the club. It's going to be the club versus the Usos. Luke Gallows, Carl Anderson versus Jimmy and Jay. Now, what I would have done for this is the winning team actually gets to go into their, you know, into the corner of Roman Reigns or AJ Styles. That's what I would have done. So if the Usos win, they can go to Roman's corner. If the club win, they go into AJ's corner. So that's what I would have done. But this match, literally, I could give a rat's ass about. So I'm going to go with the club because why not? Bullet Club for life. And as always, we have our main event. It is for the WWE World Heavyweight title. I mean, yes, I know. Once again, not the right World Heavyweight title. Just go with it. We've been going with it for a while now. It is going to be, once again, a rematch from Payback. It is going to be AJ Styles versus Roman Reigns in the Extreme Rules. Now, this one is a little tough. If you go back and you watch my payback predictions, I predicted that the club turned on AJ. Didn't happen. I'm basically going to go with that again. The club are going to turn on AJ. It has to happen. Finn Balor is going to come up at some point. He has to take control. AJ is not a leader. I'm sorry, AJ is not a follower. He's a leader. He's not made to be following people's orders. He's meant to, you know, give orders. You can't have Balor Club with AJ as the main guy. So I think Finn Balor's gonna lose at TakeOver in a few weeks, jump up to main roster, and then we'll actually see why they turned on AJ Styles. But I do see AJ Styles getting turned on this Sunday by the club, and I Roman Reigns is gonna win. Guys, it's just gonna happen. SummerSlam, Shield, Triple threat i wanted it at mania didn't get it wanted it at the rumble didn't get it wanted it at this year's mania didn't get it so has to happen at summerslam come on to be but you just fucking book the shield triple threat reigns retains reigns wins god damn it wwe stop shoving him down our throats that is going to do it for this prediction video. If you have any predictions that you want to tell me, down in the comment section below, let me know who you are rooting for tomorrow night. Extreme Rules on the WWE Network. I honestly cannot wait. It's going to be an amazing, amazing pay-per-view. Hopefully, all my predictions come true. Only once have I ever gotten all my predictions correct, and I'm pretty sure that was at SummerSlam last year. Anyways, guys, if you did enjoy, leave a like, hit the subscribe button, show for the channel, and this series. Guys, I've been Kills105, and I'll talk to you all later. I saw it.